Okay, great. So I will call this meeting of the Millville Capital Planning Committee to order at 7.05 p.m. on February 24th. Um, so tonight we're going to review the spend that we're going to propose to put on the warrant for we'll make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen to put on the warrant for the annual town meeting, which is normally held in May. Um, Alex, I was wondering if you could make it so I could share my screen because I did update kind of the Excel spreadsheet and that might be easier for everyone to kind of see. I just have some numbers and that might just, I mean, just go tick, tick, tick on that. All right, sharing should be enabled. Okay, so let me move this over here. Um, go back here. Share. Two. Okay. Um, so I did update the balances based on the information that Peter provided at the last meeting. Um, so I thought um, I was going to go in order on the agenda, if that's okay. Ah. Start with the senior center. Is this big enough? Can everybody see it? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so how I thought I would do this is I would make a motion, someone would second it, then we could discuss, and then we'll take a vote. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I like to make the window so I can see all of your faces. There we go. All right. So I will make a motion to allocate $11,000 to the Senior Center for General Repairs, which includes fencing, skirting, um, and lighting and sensors and some electrical work. I'm looking for a second. 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 Okay, second. So um, for me, I thought that these requests seemed reasonable and it seemed like these were things we wanted to get done based on what the senior center told us. So especially the skirting, which will kind of keep critters out if I understood her correctly and there's a critter issue. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any other opinions on that that they want to discuss or I can call for a vote, but I don't yeah, I want no, others to say, give could, their voice. Can I just say one thing? Um, I know that Jerry did, uh, you know, did the carpeting, which is the next one on there. But based on sort of what I saw in his pictures and his uh, an email that uh, where he reported the facts he observed, the amount that they need might be smaller and therefore might be worth bundling with this line item. And so that's just a consideration of uh, a potential amendment to the eleven thousand by increasing it. And adding in that bundle um, some, you know, floor repairs in a general manner that might be specified in what Jerry talks about. So I, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but it, you know, it might might be worthwhile just to include them all together. So the the total nut might not get to the full 24 that you're showing for the senior center, but something okay. less because less of carpeting needs to be done or less of flooring needs to be done. So I'm open to that, Peter. Would you recommend we take half of the cost of the carpeting, make it 6,500, so it's 17,500, or would you make it an even 20? Uh, I think I, I don't know the magnitude or what, what the costs are of what seems necessary to be done on the flooring. So, you know, more uh, not to exceed 20, maybe 17,500 will do it, but, you know, allowing the flexibility of the 20. I just don't have a sense and I defer to Jerry on his, uh, you know, he was on site and has some pretty darn good expertise uh, on these matters, even though he'll say he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for putting, thanks for putting me on the spot. Pete. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would think the 17 five would be uh, more than generous for what it may be. Um, as you read the report that I did and hope you did, uh, you'll see quite clearly that the uh, the main concern, as I viewed it, was the um, two bathrooms. Um, as you can well imagine, after 14 years, water gets underneath some of those uh, uh, areas around the uh, the handicapped uh, bathroom, 
uh, as well as the uh, toilets, as well as the urinals. And uh, th that gets underneath there and those are lifting and bubbling. Uh, that is in the uh, men's and ladies room, which is side by each. And we're talking. And then if you go into the uh, kitchen area, um, they did have a refrigerated freezer there before that um, the heating coil in there, we told them was not working correctly. Uh, it did freeze up and then thaw and then freeze up and thaw and it melted and went down and it um, has bubbled and rippled the tile uh, underneath the new one. And it, it actually works its way over to where the drain is in there. So those tiles in there have lifted, um, not a lot, but there's probably six, eight, 10 of them. But I, I'm suspecting when I stepped on it, it feels squishy. I think the water got up underneath the tiles, which made them lift up and, and ripple. And I think it's probably rotted underneath there somewhat. So that's why I'm being a little a little more candid to say 17.5, because I'm not sure when they pull that up, they're not going to find rotted plywood and they're going to need to rip it up and put some more down. So it gives them a little bit of a flex on that. Uh, if they don't, it, it's like, you know, they can just piece it. Great. If not, they're going to have to bring some of it up. So that's why I think 17.5 is fair. I will then amend my motion from 11,000 to 17.5 and it will include flooring repairs. And this is to recommend, this is to put this on the warrant for the annual town meeting. I'm looking for a second again on the motion. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All good. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Great. All right. So next I had was library. Oops. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so I will make a motion to recommend to put on the to put on the warrant to spend for the library. In the amount of sixteen thousand five hundred and fifty dollars to cover bathroom repair, ceiling repairs, and a shed. Looking Second. Through. Okay. I have and no that, further questions. They were pretty clear on no, this. No, just to just to just to re-verify. That includes the 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 uh, concrete foundation. Yeah. Right for their shed. Yep. Yes, it does. <laughs> I wanted to mention, um, as far as the concrete foundation goes, Pete, uh, it can either be a concrete foundation or it could be pillars. Yep. It can go either way. Um, there was, and I think, Jeff, you know more about this than I do, but I was told by uh, a construction person that the pillars will work just as well in a uh, structure that is small enough um, as this is um, relative to uh, pillars um, as opposed to a, a doing more excavating to be able to put in a foundation, which they said is uh, immeasurably more expensive. So uh, I think the numbers right that you got, and it may come in uh, somewhat less because you don't have to do as much site work, I think they call it. So uh, that's that's at least what I was told. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you can you can put it on. They're actually more like uh, pillars, uh, stanchions. They they're precast. Um, just as long as you kind of seal up, <clears throat> I mean, if you just have just the, the precast pillars, as you call them, or little stanchions, there's still spacing underneath the shed. So just as long as it's it's sealed up along the, the sides, there shouldn't be any uh, intrusion from critters and stuff like that. And it would be a lot cheaper. So that's a good way to go, probably. It would save a lot of money, you know. So, again, if we're trying to be conservative on this and yet still be able to support um, the, the buildings we have, um, I'm, I'm good with that. And it, I'm, we'll have to wait and see if, if that's the better way to go, if it is. And probably that amount of money would be covered and, and may even have a little extra that uh, they may be left over. They could do some window sills with or something, but that, that'd that be my recommendation, 16,550. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find the actual dimensions, the size of the shed. I, I can't pull it up for some reason, but what were they actually talking about for the size of that shed out there? Anybody uh, have that information in front of them? I think it was like a 12 by something. Probably 12 by 15 or something like that, maybe. It was. I don't know if it was even that big. 
Yeah, yeah if, it, if it's that small, then you don't really need to have a slab. Yeah. But just, well, that, that's that's I, I think you're right, Jeff, in terms of it is smaller. That's what I was told the slab and the site work should be foregone, foregone because of the fact that it's a smaller area that you need to support and the pillars would do it. Yeah. Or whatever you call them, stanchions or whatever. Yeah, I, I think I, you're I right. I think it's that. 16 by 12, 10 by 12, 12 by 16. I don't know. Something like that was where it was. I don't remember the exact number. I don't have it in front of me. Hey, Alex, um, Steve Trangali says he's in, but just as an observer, can you see him from the audience and promote him into the meeting? Is that possible? Yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. I don't see him there. Okay. Perhaps he's um, just watching on live stream on, on the internet okay. through his browser. Okay. He might have to go out and come back in on the Zoom link. Okay. Yeah. Well, he says he can hear us, so I think he heard that, but I'll text him anyway. <laughs> okay. Does, yes, he's on a live stream. Okay, so I told him to leave and come back. Um, I'm just let me make sure I sent him. Maybe I'll cut and paste the link out. Just a second. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, just make sure it's the uh, the Zoom Good. link and not the the live stream live link. Stream. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so just as an aside on the library, if you look, they have, you know, we had talked about the um, furnace in the future, <clears throat> but what, actually the Green Community Committee will be applying for a new grant and will include that furnace, uh, including the relocation of it and so forth in the grant application. And, you know, they got we got the grant for the uh, uh, furnace replacement over at the fire station. So chances are very good. There's lots of money available. <clears throat> and I'll just, I'll just put a plug in for, for that committee. There's Steve. I was going to make it exciting. Well, my, my <laughs> technology, my technology skills couldn't fill a thimble. So that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've only done one vote so far. So this one. And it was only yeah, to I, on the warrant. We still have to vote on like what if we recommend we spend it on. So. Gotcha. I'm up to speed. Let's roll. Yep. <laughs> okay. So we are on the library spend right here. See the 16550. So I made a motion. Jerry made a second. And now we're just in discussion. So is there any other discussion? I'll call for a vote. Okay. So all those in favor of putting this spend on the warrant, um, say aye. 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 Okay. Hi. Okay, perfect. Um, and then next I have public safety. So for turn out gear. Mm. Okay, we'll do the turnout gear first. Um, so I will make a motion to put on the warrant at the annual town meeting to spend <clears throat> $16,000. Um, and this will come from the public safety stabilization to replace turnout gear for the fire department. I second. Um, any discussion on this? I'm, my opinion, well, my, it's fact, it's known that this turnout gear is expiring. So if someone were, if we had a fire and someone needed to use it and it was expired, it would be bad news for Millville. Bad. Yeah, I'd say that's imperative. We, get, we have to do that. You know, yeah. you can't, you can't not do that. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think you have an issue there. Okay. I mean, well, then I will call for a vote. All those in but favor. Just, just, if I could, just for discussion, yeah. just to clarify, but as, as you might recall, the chief pointed out that he is applying for a grant to cover mm -hmm. this cost for this piece of it. So there's a yeah, very good chance we won't need what we might be approving in the next two minutes. Correct. Yeah. It would be great for it to come back. You know, That's yeah, right. that, that'd be super. Yeah. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Um, so the other expense that the chief was asking for was a police car. So I'm going to make a motion, and I don't want to be confusing. So I'm just going to say we're going to vote to put on the warrant, and then we'll have some discussion. So I will make a motion to put, um, I'm not sure, Peter, is this number right? The 477, that's from last year. Yeah, no, he was at, uh, I think he was down under 40 at this point, wasn't he? Didn't? But that doesn't include the other items, like the. No, I think that's the outfitted car. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, it was like the lower cost Jeep or uh, Chrysler version, the, the Durango. Durango. Right. And wasn't that like 35 plus stuff? So, yeah. Was, yeah. So maybe it's, so that's probably the right number, actually. It is nearing 50 grand. It is, is that Sorry, the uh, heavy model or what? 200. The, the only thing that I remember him going over was the Durango Hemi, which was 36248. That doesn't include like the inner workings that a police car yeah. needs, like the yeah. radio and like yeah. other yeah. things. And that's 15 grand or less. It's not it's not quite 15 grand, I think, as I as I recall. But the, the, he's got a new Durango. 000. Yeah, he has a non Hemi Durango that's the lowest quote, and that was thirty three five or thirty three seven um so i think i think you're you're there um 50 50, 50 is good he won't spend it all it'll come back yeah. that's i i remember him saying also that they have the the v6 durango presently and they were very happy with it so yeah. he wanted to go with the v6 also go with the the lower price one yeah, and that, yeah. That, that'd be good and he said the warranty was much better as well compared with the other cars so right. if we were to acquire it something were to go wrong like it just made yeah. it seemed to make, in my opinion, this one made sense all around. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I will make a motion to put on the warrant for the annual town meeting um, a police car in the amount of fifty thousand dollars from the public safety stabilization fund. I second. Okay. So discussion. Um, so I actually don't support this spend because of the plan. Um, there are three reasons why I don't support this spend. The first is this committee made a commitment to the town that we would buy this car every other year. The second reason is um, this was part of our plan. We are just starting. We've only like this is kind of year two of this committee. And we're going to have other things that we need to look at, like buildings. One of those buildings could be a police station and we could need money in the public stabilization fund to do that. So because we don't have that long-term building plan yet, I'm hesitant to pull money out of any stabilization when it doesn't reflect our original plan because we could have other things that come up. And by sticking with the plan, that lets us better manage other things that do come up. Um, and I guess the third point is, you know, and I know the chief mentioned that, you know, I have these police cars and they're older and things like that. So, and I'm not just saying this to be like a pain, but I do think that with the one new police car every year, like the chief can manage to that. Like we're going to, we've made the commitment. This is the schedule, manage to the schedule. And so I believe that I have confidence that the chief can manage to that schedule. Um, so that's my piece there. So I don't know if anyone has any other points that they wanted to make. Well, with all due respect to my favorite selectman on this committee, um, <laughs> uh, you know, the chief is it, it, a couple of things. Yes, we did a, a plan last year at, at every two years. Plans, you know, can vary depending on what you might learn more. What I think one of the things the chief's concerned about is the car he's looking to replace is six years old. It'll be seven years old by the time he replaces it. It's the Ford Fusion, um, which is not too practical. It'll have high mileage. It's a hybrid that gets twitchy as it starts to get older. Um, but the other point that I make on the on the you know potential police station, the funding for that is I, I don't know that the funding can can come out for a facility can come out of this public safety stabilization. I don't know what the restrictions are, but I think this public safety stabilization, which gets replenished every year to the tune of 
35, 40 grand from the ambulance fees. And now we're going to have a new ambulance, which will be more readily available, usable, and hopefully generate even greater fees. We'll continue to replenish this fund. Uh, he we won't, we were trying to preserve it, I think, in most people's minds, that fund for the purchase of an ambulance, which again, we won't need to do. Um, then you say, well, what might we need for other fire safety equipment like, uh, you, you know, a truck or, a, you know, fire truck of some sort? And those are way expensive. In talking to the chief, I don't think there's anything on the imminent horizon in the next many years for the need there. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm in favor of doing this. Uh, I will also say in my experience with the town of Sherburn, we, we used to, all of their cruisers were purchased through the operating budget because they didn't last beyond three years. So it was not a capital item as defined, <clears throat> but one, one year we, it was a, it, it was a, you would buy one every other year, you'd buy two every other year alternating in one year, they skipped the two. And it took them five years to ca you know get back on track, and it really kind of messed the oper. It, it, it was not helpful to the police operation. So that, that's all I'm going to say on this uh, before I start saying the same things over. <laughs> I guess the one point I would make on the ambulance revenues is we I would like to see us have this ambulance before we start counting the revenues. Fair, fair point. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> Um, just, just two quick points. Uh, the first one is um, I pulled up the uh, estimate um, for the library shed, and it's a 10 by 12. So we can get that in the record. So that should be sufficient for the peers. Um, that's from uh, Pro Handyman. Um, I'm going to have to go along uh, as much as I, uh, I hate to go against a uh, plan. I'm going to have to go along with the chief on this. Um, I just don't know enough about policing and about um, the cars and so forth that, you know, looking at what he has and the mileage that he has on uh, and the age he has on those cars. I, I firmly believe that uh, he can manage to that. I think you're right, Jen. I think he can. Um, but when you give him the opportunity to prove it, uh, you, you give him the opportunity with that second car and then let's put a hammer down on him and may have him manage those things correctly so that we can, we can, um, roll them over on a regular basis uh, through the through the budget. My concern is, <clears throat> this isn't the first time I've heard him speak about uh, the cars. He's talked about it on a number of different occasions. I think last year there was a robust discussion on it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there was a robust discussion about it the year before when it first was brought up. Um, he seems pretty adamant. This hasn't changed his tune. And um, I believe a professional that's been in the business for 36 years knows what it is that he needs to do and, and actually is, uh, uh, you know, on the floor doing the work, I guess, um, knows what type of equipment he needs and how we should uh, get it done with that type of equipment. I'm going to go along with the chief on this, and I believe probably it sounds like with Pete. Um, and I, I, I know that I, I, first of all, I was on the committee last year, so I got I to I gotta buy on that. Um, so, but I do think it, it's important to uh, hold him accountable, give him the tools, and let him do the job. And that's the way I've always managed, and I believe that uh, it, it'll be the way that we can manage him going forward, Jen. So I'd be in favor of it. And I, I suppose I would say something kind of similar, but I, I think at this point we need to have somewhat of a, if it's possible, an ironclad schedule. I mean, I, I don't think this was like an unpredicted expense. We should really be able to forecast out indefinitely. You know, if we do one every other year, that's it. Sorry, chief. And uh, whoever the next chief may be, not that I'm trying to hit that, you know, we're trying to get rid of this one, but <laughs> we just need to set up a schedule and, and hold to it far, far out into the future. And, uh, you know, that's, so I agree. I, I think I would probably vote yes this time, but we need to develop and hold everyone to a schedule. That was what we developed last year, Steve. Yeah, so we said, yeah. so we, he got a new car last year and then we said, yep. and I said at the town meeting that we will buy one this year. You won't hear next year, but the year after that, expect to hear one. Expect every other year, if you live in yep. Melville, to buy a police car. Yep. So that was the schedule that we put forth. And I know you weren't on the committee then, but that is the exactly. schedule that this committee presented to I understand. 
Yeah, fair enough. So I, I you know, I, I really do sit on the fence here because, you know, I do, I do agree with, um, you know, what's been said about, Hey, we got this new ambulance. So we have some extra money. Uh, I, I was also on the committee last year. So I can say that we did uh, set up a schedule and, and I, I, I'm, I'm shocked that we're not following that. I do understand that the chief does know what he needs and what he doesn't need. Um, but I, I think, you know, running, running an department in my own company, I, I do know that I always want, right. And you want more than, than, right. than sometimes and you can, you can have. So I, I'm going to vote no on this. Jeff, you want to tell us how you're going to vote before we call the vote or you want it to be a surprise? I'm, I'm just going to, uh, Quickly, just to clarify, he he wants to get, he wants to replace the administrative car, also, right? And a cruiser, he wants to do two things, just the no, one, no, just the one in this, pe in this period, future, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Are you yeah I, I'd the say car again next year, I think. <clears throat> yeah. Year. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we I, shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. This the year, ask this year is a police car. Yeah, just a cruiser. I mean, I, I would say. <clears throat> I would say yes to replace the fusion, but then um, in the same in the same way, I mean, he's going to have to wait a couple of good years before another replacement. And I'm looking at the numbers right now. I don't think these other ones are going to be. Well, I guess that other explorer is getting high mileage, but you know, we do have to also plan for like these buildings are important. Like we the police building, you know, a, a highway building, and whatever we end up doing with the town hall in five, six years, it's going to take um, a bunch of years of saving to be able to accommodate that. So we do need to put a good nest egg away for the future. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would say to replace a sedan so we have all SUVs and have newer, you know, vehicles for now. And even if we can bump it off three years, maybe, you know, if, if possible, if not, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm concerned with being able to save enough money for when we are going to need that. It's going to be a big expense to have a, a municipal center with a, you know, police station, you know, highway building. If, if we need to get a new town hall, you know, that kind of stuff, we're going to need to save, you know? So that's, that's where my mind is going. Um, I, I, I do think that having a, a Ford Fusion, <clears throat> well, Maybe we could squeak it one more year. I, That's why I'm encouraging we stick with the plan. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, go, you know, go I on. mean, that's, that's gonna, uh, so we're so we're putting this. This is a recommendation to put it on the warrant or not. At which point, voters will determine whether it's to be purchased okay. or not. And all those arguments that all of us are making can be made as well. And the chief can make his case for this. Uh, I just want to point out that you've got those two cars there, the Fusion and the Explorer with high mileage. We're also going to be rolling out of a lease, as you may recall, for FY23. So there'll be a non-capital, if you will, purchase uh, from an operating lease, a three-year operating lease uh, of one of these cars as a replacement. So, it, it, and and that's going to happen, you know, FY23 is the way that uh, scheduling would be. So I, anyway, I, I was there last year when the committee, I was on the committee when we, I, I kind of reluctantly went for the two-year thing. I mean, the chief has always been on an 18-month replacement. You know, it's, you get six years out of these cars. Um, he's got four in the rotation. It's 18 months. That, that was his simple math. Um, but again, I'm not, you know, it's his department. He's the expert. Um, we'll see where the chips fall. I guess on that, we did have um, a member who was in public safety who recommended the two years who was on the committee. So that was um, Josh Pugnancy. Right. Okay. okay. Anything else or so I just call for the vote? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. 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 So that's so what the tie doesn't doing. go on the warrant. So, you're, so you, what you're doing is you're making a recommendation to the finance committee 
All right. I mean, that's really what we're doing is making a recommendation to the finance committee. That's right. Um, the selectmen determine what goes on the warrant. So it's Correct. really a three, three vote in favor of this item uh, by the capital committee. What, you know, so it, it's a conundrum. I'm not sure what the, yeah. how the process will on will unfold to actually, whether it will get on the warrant or not. And that, you know, again, falls back on the selectmen yeah. um, at the end okay. of the day. Well, that would be our, um, yeah. Okay. No, fair enough, Peter. That's um, uh, one last comment. Oh, I'm sorry, I would just say one last thing. Um, just quick, one more part of it, I think would go a long way this year in this case. You know what I'm saying? And um, when we get on a better schedule with everything, then it'd be good. But I think one more year would, would go a long way as far as, you know, getting replacing vehicles. And yeah. I think the, the fusion can, can take one more year of abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then for the highway department, I still have the street sweeper. And I know that we talked about, it's only used twice a year. And I have not yet heard from the highway department around looking to other organizations. And I also, um, I did ask, I reached out to the chief Peter, as you suggested regarding the shed and um, he get, the information I got wasn't I wasn't in line I think with what Brian was looking for, for right. that are by the school. So I think unfortunately we have to table the highway department um, to next week. Is that okay? Yeah, that makes sense. We don't have all the information. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go back through the votes and there'll be um, do you support the warrant or not? And this will probably be back. Um, so we'll go back to the senior center. Ah, I'm sorry. Can I just um, ask one question before we move on? Yeah. Um, I was trying. To, I was trying to look back through my emails and all my stuff. The 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 past year's cost to have a street sweeping crew, some company come in and do our street sweeping. I, I couldn't find the figures. Do we know exactly how much it cost us to hire somebody to sweep our streets in the past oh. years? Yeah, Jerry provided that, and I believe it was around sixteen thousand to do it both times. So it was like seventy nine hundred one so, time, so thirty three years something. Yeah. one time. Okay. So basically, in two years, it would pay for itself. But at the same time, we use it twice a year. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the actual street sweeping budget uh, for twenty twenty one street sweeping line item two eighty eight was nine thousand dollars. Um, street sweeping sand removal, and that's where it becomes common no matter who does it, $7,500 um, for a total uh, budget of 16500 which was the same as it was in 2020. And in 2019, it was actually thirteen three. So it's gone up a couple 3000 So the total between the 7500 of the sand removal, uh, which is common, and 9,000 for the street sweeping. Now, Peter, um, you need to help me with this. I don't know if this had accumulated where it was supposed to be done twice and we only did it once. So this reflects once or reflected it was budgeted for twice, but we only did it once. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and actually the budget numbers I have, Jerry, I think it was amended in the fall. So the street sweeping went up to 13.5, that one line. Well, that was because it was two, Pete. Yes, to get to, to cover the right. two sweepings. Right. There was a period one might think might they might have heard that it was only done once when it was, you know, under the permit, uh, if you will, from the feds, you've got to do it twice. Correct. Yeah. So I guess your answer to that, Jen, is thirteen five is the street sweeping. Okay. Um, so yeah. that'd be the number. The uh, street sweeping sand removal. Um, I'm not sure I got a good answer uh, on that when I asked Brian. Right now, my understanding is that once that machine is done and it spends its four days doing all the streets, once it's done doing a certain amount and it fills up the bucket, it then takes and dumps it into a truck, which I've seen it do. And uh, that truck then runs down to someplace in Millville, uh, I'm not sure where, and it actually dumps the sand there. And it, I guess there's some testing that has to be done on that for the amount of salinity in it or whatever it might be from the salt and sand in the street. 
Um, so that seems to be common with the guys taking it away and dumping it down to our place or whether we do it ourselves. So yeah. I think we got a more pure cost of the of the 13, whatever uh, it was, 13, yeah. six. I think that's the more pure cost of what it is to actually street, uh, sweep the streets. Of the bay, I think. <clears throat> It, it's, it sounds great. I just want to say that, um, you know, I, I work, obviously, I work in this field all the time. Um, it's, it's actually considered hazardous material, the street sweeping stuff, just because of any kind of oil leakage from vehicles and anything that end up on the roadways. You have to end up having that in a, you know, in a certain spot and they need to test it, like you said, and then it costs a lot of money to ship it out and it has to go to a, a certain licensed facility to take care of it. Now in our town, we we have a, a dedicated pile. It's actually in our in our um, recycle center landfill area, and we have a big pile of street sweepings. And we ended up waiting for it to pile up enough for it to be, you know, financially feasible for us to get it tested and get it shipped out. Now it could be two or three years before the pile is big enough for us to ship it out right. and have it be worth, worth the money. So. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's considered hazardous material. That's that's where the a big expense comes in because you have to have it tested and it has to go to a dedicated facility and it's a pain in the butt. It really is. But you, you do have to do it twice. And um, we don't have a, a ton of road miles, so I mean, twenty seven point five to be precise. You might want to you might want to think about um, having to dispose of the material. You might not have to do it every year. It might be like oh. every two years or every three yep. years. I agree. So I think I think that's a good point. I think Brian mentioned that that they actually stored it somewhere. I don't know where, and they actually piled it there. So it's always by the old landfill. It's always yeah. He right probably he probably kept it there for a couple of years before they actually had to do it. They had to have it tested yeah. so it doesn't leak into the into the aquifer. That's the that's the key thing. Um, yeah, yeah, and you and you have to have it in its own secluded area, so it's right. you know right. totally contained. You know what I mean? So I guess Jen, that's. What I'm saying is you look at the, say, 14 grand. Um, so you say it's seven grand a, a time that sweep. <laughs> it's seven grand a sweep. So uh, it's it's eight days, seven grand a sweep. Uh, you keep it down where we always keep it. And you don't have to move it until a couple of years later. So it's going to cost you, you know, 14 grand. Um, I did do a little homework. I would on. just say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just one more thing I'm going to say yeah. is... um. You know, working for the DPW, at this point, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's worth it to spend twenty-five grand on a sweeper um, for our road miles. I, I'm going to come back to the whole maintenance thing too. It costs us a lot of money to maintain these things. A lot of parts, a lot of cleaning, a lot of time spent, and um, it, it would be nice to have one, obviously, right? But um, it might, in my opinion, I don't think it's worth it at this point. I work, I, you know, I work for the DPW, so, but those no, are about two cents. Yeah. yeah, it's, they're expensive. It's pain in the butt. How, how much are they? Is that what you asked, Jen? No, no, no. I said, I said, Jeff's our expert. I guess the other concern I have, so I know how we, we um, Brian put in 25000 The other concern I have is we don't have a place to store this, so it'd be out yeah, exactly. the elements, and we're only exactly. using it two times a year, so it could get, you know, Think about leaving something in your yard and going to use it six months later. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. So, yeah, I agree that we should probably move this later on, or um, maybe have Brian look into some, some like, could we buy one with another town? You know, That's going to be hard to do. I'm, I'm sorry. Really? I'm going to get it again. Um, yeah, we, we've actually tried to get into that probably years ago, maybe six years ago or something. Not a lot of towns want to share a sweep with you. <laughs> um, it depends on who operates it, who's fixing it, who's doing everything. But um, it's a, it's kind of a scary liability to have to trust somebody else to share the thing and take care of it the way you take care of it. And not a lot of towns are going to want to share it. We, we've looked at before. You'd be, I mean, you can look around, but you'd be hard pressed to find surrounding towns that are going to want to go in on a co-op with it you know i know certain towns like black certain towns already have their own so they're not going to even get involved with that and, just and that. jen just to let you know i i uh, because i had heard that before 
from Jeff, I did um, have the occasion to go and look up and say, well, Pee Wiz, can we go rent one of these things for eight days, four days in the spring and four days in the fall? And yeah, you can. Um, if you want to look it up, it's Sunbelt Rentals. Um, they go three to five miles an hour. So if you get 20, whatever I said, 25.7 or 27.5 miles and you're going three to five miles an hour, I understand you got to stop and dump your sand. I got it. But figure it out. Um, Brian's probably accurate using that as a mileage that they actually go at and the mileage we actually have for streets that you're looking at probably eight days. Um, also, I looked at the pricing of these things and Jeff, you're smarter than I am on this, but some of these prices are pretty hefty, my friend. They were 120 grand, 90 grand, 80 grand, brand new one, not, not used, brand new one. No, we, and you know what's really we bought, we, is some of the pots, the big brush on the back, back of it, that brush is super expensive. But nonetheless, I looked at that and they do have rentals. Uh, Sunbelt does rent one. Um, they have three locations in Shrewsbury, two in Worcester. Um, and actually, uh, for a day, um, I should say for a week, it's $8,000 a week. So you can rent them from <laughs> Sunbelt the Rental. Um, they do require someone with a CD license or something like that. And they would need to be, um, they would need to come to a training session so they know how to operate in case they never operated one, which makes only sense. So uh, I think you probably got eight grand. You throw another grand on it, Jen, um, just because of training and probably because you got to get it here, I guess. They don't, you know. So, I mean, that you can look up yourself at Sunbelt Rentals, two in Worcester, three in Shrewsbury. And uh, it's part of the Sweeping Contractors of Massachusetts uh, called the NAPSA. Uh, all star sweeping is what it is, and they use Nighthawks. I don't know, Jeff, if that means anything to you, but that's the brand they like to use is Nighthawks, which is, I guess, a, a brand that they have. So, anyways, that's that's what I found off found out. Um, if that's of any help, uh, I think I agree uh, wholeheartedly with Jeff and, and Jen on this thing. Um, the town got a lot of needs. Uh, be nice to have this. I, I just I think between the maintenance side of it and also the uh, the storage, where we're going to put it. I mean, think of what the snow we've had here so far. Just having it sitting out there in the snow. Um, Jeff has said to me that he, he fixes the ones that he has some responsibility for where he works. And there, and I, I'll let Jeff tell you, but I think he mentioned that they're, they're kind of really needy when it comes to, think about it. They suck yeah. up sand all day and dirt. I mean, filters, bleh, whatever. I don't, I don't even think we need to vote on this this evening, though, because I, I believe that Brian had other priorities like sheds first, and I just don't have numbers for that right now. I, I think you're right. You, you mentioned okay. the idea of the street sweep. I think it ought to be put on the back burner at best, mm -hmm. um, and I thought that, you know, we I think we've pretty well talked it through that it probably doesn't make sense. More importantly, he needs a shed. Yeah. Well, I'm well, sorry, well, Jerry. Brian. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, just one last question. Jerry, um, when you were looking at those figures, do you know what kind of street sweeper that you were looking at? Because they have different kinds. They have some that are called vacuum sweepers and then some that are um, like an Elgin Pelican is a, is a big rotary sweeper. The Elgin Pelican is the one that they mentioned. Uh, they, also the called it, they also called it from the all-star sweeping, they called it Nighthawks. So that's, that's the best I could get off it, but... Uh, I saw the Pelican ones. I saw the other ones that were more for parking lots. Um, yeah. This one is for municipal uh, street sweeping, and it does it, it does have the big sweeper on the back and blah 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 and all that. Yeah, yeah. We we bought a brand new one in 2018. It was 170 thousand dollars. Okay, I think that probably so, ends the discussion. <laughs> they're big bucks, but the, but the but the I was I was just gonna say the the vacuum sweepers. It's more it's more like a truck, and it it has some brooms. Yes more of a vacuum and they're a lot cheaper and um they come and i don't sizes. think i don't think you need a cd license on that either jeff you don't need one for that. you don't need one you actually don't need not one for the either. truck one, you know, the was, requires it right the, the the big one the elgin you do the nighthawk the one that is a smaller one that is a truck with a broom in the back uh that one there is less less expensive and it is, um, yes. it is uh, something that doesn't even need, you don't even need a CD on it. You just need to have a guy trained on how to drive the truck and how to squirt all the buttons, I guess, or whatever. But nonetheless, anyways. Yeah, I actually...
I actually did a little bit of research and I looked into uh, all the different ones and I, I meant to send an email out before tonight's meeting, but I, I hadn't gotten a chance. So I'll probably send it out sometime this week, hopefully, and, and just give you guys some figures and some different options um, Good. going forward, you know, next year, whatever, two years, whatever we're going to decide on. But, you know, um, there are options out there for going with something cheaper than Elgin, Elgin Pelican is the cream of the crop. You know, yes, that's the, golden that's the one they recommend for the municipal. Um, however, yeah, that awesome. municipal is pretty small, you know, in terms of street mm -hmm. uh, miles. Yeah, but those main we're rooms and those gutter rooms. Else, that's that's we're nice. talking a lot about a street sweeper and we're not even going to vote on it tonight. So is it okay? Is there anything else that we feel is very pressing on a street sweeper or should we move on? No, no, move on. Okay, move all right. right. It's fascinating discussion. Sorry, I very, on. very, very enlightening. I'm sure. Yes. That's right. I, um, I, I work okay. on a ton of stuff, and the sweeper is the biggest pain in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Good to know. Yeah. That's yeah. good to know. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back through the three things. The, um, I'm guessing that they'll probably line up with our recommendations. Like to put it on the war, the recommends will be the same. But since I said I would do this process, I want to be a woman of my word. Um, so we will go back and, okay, so starting with the library and, I'm sorry, no, starting with the senior center, which we decided to combine these, we did 17, 5, oh, this is nothing, sorry, I can move this over here, this will include, hmm. I hate sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> I think we get that. I know. <laughs> the, season's <laughs> the, the, the season's coming soon. Yeah. Okay. Jess' nickname is going to be Nighthawk. Yeah. <laughs> I never it, heard it, of Nighthawk. It, 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 is that the Sandman? <laughs> Sandman. That's a good one, too. <laughs> it's funny you guys keep saying sand because, you know, there's not a whole lot of sand involved. It's a lot of leaves, a lot of it's like it's like mud almost, and yeah. you can tell that there's oil in it. That's why they sludge. consider it hazardous material. Sludge. It's sludge. Mm. It's yucky. And I got to work on it. <laughs> so I will make a motion that we recommend the spend to the town of seventeen thousand five hundred dollars for various senior center repairs, and that will come from the capital stabilization fund. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I got six zero. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I will make a motion to recommend the spend of sixteen thousand five hundred fifty dollars. For general repairs to the library, which will be pulled from the capital stabilization fund. Second. Hi. Jerry is a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, oh, and then we have the turnout gear. I will make a motion that we recommend the spend of $16,000 for turnout gear for the fire department and that would be pulled from the public safety stabilization fund. Second. Second. I think that Jeff seconded it first. You can have it. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't hurt your feelings, okay. Um, <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I'm frankly taking notes as fast as you're talking. That's why I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. Anything. That's fine. Um, and then Jen, Jen, I'm sorry. How much was that for? Six thousand. Sixteen thousand. I'm sure my screen. Yep. Six. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. It'd be the magic number. Um. Okay. And then. Um, just in case this goes on the warrant, because as Peter mentioned, it is up to the board of selectmen to put it on and it, it could make it on there. But I think we should have a recommendation from this committee on that um, warrant. So I will, I'm going to do it in the positive so that it's not like I vote not to do this and then it's all confusing. I just like to keep it straightforward. I'm going to make the motion to do it and then vote as you please. 
So I will make the motion to allocate $50,000 for, I'll make a motion that this committee recommends the spend of $50,000 for a police car, which should be pulled from the public safety stabilization. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Were you a nay as well, Ken? Yes. Okay, so, uh, so three, three, is three. the recommendation, same as the first vote, I'm not surprised. Okay. All right, great. So I'll follow up with Brian and then we can uh, knock out the highway department stuff and then we'll be good to go. And then I'll go to the finance committee and I'll talk about this at the board of selection meeting as well. Um, so item number three, Peter, I did see some very exciting activity on stabilization accounts. Is that something we should talk about tonight or should we talk about that board of selection meeting first? Uh, you saw exciting things on that. I don't, I don't have anything exciting. I'm working on something if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I saw the balance for stabilization for free cash. Oh, Sorry. that's not exciting. That's not yeah, that wasn't that exciting when I, when I went to the other night. No. No, it's not exciting. It's but it's in it's in it's in it's it's likely to change. I'm I'm it, it will likely change in our favor. Right now, it's not in our favor. So it's not available for uh, supplementing stabilization right. based on what they've certified. But there are two open items to uh, amend what they've certified that we're negotiating with the Department of Division of Local Services. Not negotiating, just finalizing. Okay. So then we won't talk about, we'll leave the balances as is based on our la last um, known data and we that, can revisit this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the accounts wouldn't change until town meeting, yep. should there be money available to move into it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're lucky that we have the capital and public safety stabilization funded now. So we have the money that we want to spend as well below both those balances. Um, so we're lucky that we have that. Yeah. So I, I, I spent a wonderful two hours with the auditors today, sort of in wrap up of the draft uh, audit if you will and uh, you know one of the points that they they mentioned was you know millville is really showing some good strength uh, having you know nearly a million bucks in these stabilization accounts and all of that i mean you know the town's come a long way and uh, yeah. that's a that's a, a good job by all of the folks involved in the town all the folks on the various committees who pay attention and you know are are good at not always saying yes. Mm -hmm. So well done. Um, I don't believe Peter an update on the funding acquisition of an ambulance. Anything? No, an ambulance is on order. We've ordered the only one that was available in the state of Massachusetts that could be delivered um, before June thirtieth, and it's going to be delivered probably in four weeks, and it nice. meets the town's needs. And uh, the bill will be going to the state for 250 grand. And it will have a lot of bells and whistles to it. It'll be fancy. We'll have a Excellent. fancy ambulance. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a, quick, a quick comment. Um, having a new ambulance, we're not going to be spending uh, nearly as much money on maintenance costs. Having a new one versus having our old one, which we had to send out every other week and Time. spend a lot of money on just getting it back on the road. You know, So we're going to we're going to be looking good in that respect also. No, no question. Yeah. And, and, and people that wind up having to need the ambulance can feel comfortable that it's not going to break down in the driveway of the hospital as it's done at least twice in the last six months. Hey, Peter, just a quick question for you. Um, the ambulance that we're going to be receiving, uh, does that uh, garner us, uh, in your opinion, uh, higher monies, uh, because of the service level uh, or capability of that ambulance relative to the older ambulance we had, um, and also I don't have a no, I don't have a specific answer, definitive. Although I'm ninety percent sure the answer is no, because we're not providing anything beyond basic life saving services. We're not providing acute life saving services. So the rates we can charge, I don't, you know, I don't know the rate structure how that's determined, but um, we're not. The level of service is not different. It's more reliable uh, with the equipment. It has uh, more equipment for saving lives in the short term. It'll have a 
you know, a chest compressor. It's going to, you know, it's got the, the lift that they need to get it in and out more easily. So sometimes they, they've had to wait for extra folks to show up to lift heavier people into the ambulance. Um, it's, they have, uh, as part of the kit, they're getting, uh, they've got, we just uh, paid, wrote, paid the bill um, for um, one of those stair chairs, I guess. It's an electric chair that you can, you can go up and down stairs with. So they're, it's all well outfitted from this grant from the, you know, the earmark from the state as well as from the CARES Act. So it's right. a, so three, you say- a $300,000 worth of machinery at the right. end of the day. You say that the it seemed like we were getting a, a debilitating number from the um, ambulance receipts uh, over time, yet we did not get a large decrease in the amount of service levels that was needed. So could one assume here, since this is more reliable, that the minimum amount that we've seen the last year or two because the thing was broken down all the time or did not enable to answer the bell when it was time, um, we should see some increase in, in revenue stream from that uh, ambulance usage now since we have ourselves a brand new ambulance. I mean, it would almost be logical you should. Yeah, so I think that's a fair assumption, but you know what assumptions do, and I think I would uh, uh, echo what Jen said early on is see how it you know does work out to, to really know that. But I think one would expect that it's always there and at the ready where before it has not been. Yeah. I, from what you had said, I didn't realize that it was actually it fell asleep twice at the hospital. So, um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Can you imagine to me. right in the driveway? That's kind of Person embarrassing. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of embarrassing. Yeah. All right. It helps, I just it helps tell the state on doing the earmark, having <laughs> having those facts. Hey, at least it got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't die in someone's home. Yeah, driveway. that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a difference. All right. Um, I will admit because I I did not look at the meeting minutes for our last meeting. I'm not ready to approve them. I don't. They're, they're, they're tip them. top. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, so Push them down the road, it's fine. Yeah, we'll do the next time. Um, liaison updates. Let me look. So I believe we actually changed a lot of them because many of them kind of closed out. I just need to remember who does what. Did we, did we lose Chris? Yeah, I was going to say, is Chris Drew gone? So I uh, texted him and just said, hey, you know, how are things? And he mentioned he's been very, very busy with work. And so um, I told him, don't worry about it. I can catch you up, you know, whenever you're kind of ready to come back. Um, so we can figure that he's, out. Yeah, he's the planning board's representative. Yeah. I mean, the planning so, board is shrinking a little bit from what I understand. Yeah. So... so uh, if he can get back in, that'd be great because he's got some knowledge that's useful. Yeah. Yep. So I don't, based on the liaison updates, I don't think we need any. So because no. we, um, MES water and other things have kind of, you know, on, on hold. Um, I did not receive any items in the last 48 hours prior to the meeting. Peter, do you need anything that we could not? Okay. Nope. Alex, is there anyone on the, uh, audience who wants to ask a question, anyone for public forum? No public forum comments. Okay. Looking for a motion to adjourn? At I have I, I have a question if I could, oh, Jen. Sure. Um, I, I think Peter was, was nice enough to go and to dig out some information relative to the uh, old town hall. Um, it was a report that he was able to um, garner, which I think was some maybe eight or nine pages mm -hmm. that was written. It appeared to uh, the previous town administrator, um, Ben Callahan. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know uh, who. I think, Jen, you were kind enough to send me a copy of it. Um, I did flip it over to Rich um, Crivello uh, because of the fact that he's a structural guy I'm not so I wanted him to look at it because now it was, he said finally I got something that I can look at that has structure all over it which 
is great. So it could help us. Um, I was just curious whether uh, the reports that were originally done, which was the sleeper material, that everybody now has that and has had at least some opportunity to hopefully go through it, make some notes, ask some questions, get ready to go. And at the same time frame, uh, whether or not you did or wanted to send out the structural report, uh, which was the preliminary report to the Feinfelder report um, that talks about the structure, the roof, uh, some of the issues, um, which as committee, I think, should be aware of as well. So they know uh, the full scope of what we're talking about and not just a particular person, me or Rich or someone else, but everybody can take a look at the same thing and ask some questions. Yeah. Is that fair? Yep, absolutely. So did um I'm not did I send that out to everyone? Did everyone get is, it or no? Is is that the one Simpson yeah. and Gumpert yeah. and Hager? Simpson and Gumpert. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Did everyone yeah, we have got it. it? Great. We got it. And as we discussed on the schedule, Jerry, March 31st will be town hall. No, I, I know that. I, I when I when you sent it to me, you only had me on it with Peter. Oh okay. when I saw just Peter and I, I said, geez, I think it would be kind of beneficial if the other folks in the group were able to see it so yep. that they then could take a look at it as well. So we'd all be in the same sheet of music singing. Uh, in the meantime, if you wish to have Mr. Cavello come, uh, I have alluded him of it as well. Uh, he's ready to, uh, to answer any questions that people may have in advance, which would be even better than waiting to the meeting. Uh, but you would need to, if you would, Jen, since you're the chairman, um, make that known to Mr. Cavello so that he would be available for that meeting if, if you wish to have him there since he knows yeah. about the structure part. Yeah, no, that's that, a that great idea. Sense? No, absolutely a great idea. And by the way, when I email something, so I usually put to Peter and then I BCC everybody else because what happens is if we, if I put it in two and everyone can reply on, we start having discussion because there's more of us on the email that's considered a meeting and we can get into trouble because then yeah, we start um, talking and other people can't hear the discussion. Like right now, everyone, right. this is posted. Everyone can come, right. it's very open. But if we start doing it, can um, yeah, any any you know, any, any type trouble. of conversation yep. or any type of adjudication that takes place is a violation. That's why it looks like you the only can, way to you, you, you can it always you goes can to send, everybody. You can send out information. Yeah, uh, but I you, you can't ask BCC. you can't ask for opinions. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But I still always BCC. So when you see it's just you and in Peter, I probably I most likely sent it to everybody. Right. Okay. Well, that I feel so much better. I, I will just echo Jerry though on Rich Cravello because he, he, you know, he would be a welcome addition to that discussion. Um, he's with Jerry. I think the two of them have spent more time than most others in the town uh, dealing with this issue. And uh, Rich, Rich makes Jerry look good. So uh, you know, it's good to have him along. He does, and he's uh, he's also smart, which even makes us both look good. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the more professional opinions we can get, the better. Yeah. Know, the more the merrier. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, hey, Jen, one last thing. You, you, you may want to think about um, what do we expect to get out of this meeting? You, you may, and I don't, I don't want to discuss it tonight. I just want you to think about it. Sometimes you want to get to uh, what's the end game we're trying to get to with this meeting. What are we trying to do? And, and, uh, and you know, I've, we've only talked about it for 10 years, so you have to excuse my, excuse my, um, mm -hmm. you know, arrogance on the thing. But, and you saw from Rich's notes, Peter, I think as well, Rich is about near the end of when he wants to go with this too. He says, how many more times are we going to talk about this? I agree. So you might want to think about your end game and then figure out from your end game, kind of do backwards math to figure out how we get to somewhere. Um, and we need to have a, an intelligent, robust discussion, in my opinion, it needs to get to an end game and a decision. Otherwise, this is going on for Christ's sake for 10 years. I mean, come on, guys. We're going to move this on. So, anyways, for what it's worth, that's that's where you're at. Yeah, no, that's that's right. It's it, it's it starts with a problem, and then we can wrap a process around it, and then it gets to an outcome. I read that in the book today. I can say, Professor. <laughs> I know. Wow. That, was, that was very good. <laughs> He's making us all look good, Ken. It's the beard. It's the beard. It's called Atomic Habits. Yeah. Ah, very good. Very good. Gee, where's promotional fee? You want me to put that in the minutes? I'll put that in the minutes for you, Ken. 
Yeah, please. We'll, we'll help that out. <laughs> Full credit. <laughs> But I think that's a good point. Why don't we see if we can fit in goals and objectives in the next meeting and like what we want to accomplish. So, Because yeah. if we don't, we're just going to keep blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, I'm tired of doing that. All right. Are we ready to adjourn now? Yeah. Motion to adjourn at 8, 10 p.m. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate it.